Navy ships search off Sydney when an ANSET ANA Viscount is reported missing soon after takeoff from Mascot. The night search yields nothing, but at dawn the following morning, battered pieces of wreckage are found on the shores of Botany Bay. And now the worst fears are realised. All 11 passengers and the four members of the crew are dead. The plane took off in heavy rain at 7.17 on Thursday night, bound for Canberra. The pilot reported he was at 5,000 feet, and then silence. First reports suggested that the aircraft might have been struck by lightning. Others suggested a mid-air explosion. Perhaps this wreckage holds the secret. A window from the plane, still unbroken. And among the personal effects washed up on the beach are tragic relics. A coat which belonged to Major Gaylard of Army Signals. Among the others killed were Dr. Harrington, Mr. O'Neill of the Department of Trade, Mr. Shaw of the Bureau of Agricultural Economics, and Mr. Sutherland of the Vacuum Oil Company. A tragic loss of life in one of Australia's few air disasters. On the shores of Botany Bay, the search goes on. A grim search for any clue to the cause of the disaster. Perhaps these were Christmas presents for kiddies who now will have a tragic, sorrowing Christmas. Cushions and parts of the plane seats are washed ashore. Police searchers fill three trucks with wreckage, among it the logbook of the ill-fated plane. But the search does not end on the shores of Botany Bay. An oil slick has pinpointed the spot where the plane dived into the water. Now police skin divers go by launch to locate the wreck. Some bodies are recovered, but muddy water after heavy rain hampers recovery operations until the following day. As planes fly overhead on normal commercial flights, the Navy boom defence vessel Kimbler acts as a salvage ship for operation recovery. Divers go below to attach winch wires to parts of the plane. And as the grim task continues, people in small boats gather nearby to watch. Walkie-talkie sets keep communications between the salvage ship and small launches operating in the bay. A flotilla of craft dedicated to helping solve the vital question, why did the Viscount crash? Piece after piece of wreckage is hauled aboard. Some large pieces, such as doors and fuselage, windows, parts of the wings, some of it badly mangled, some of it almost intact. A helicopter hovers overhead, looking down into the waters of Botany Bay to spot wreckage which may have been strewn further afield by the force of the crash. A fisherman in a small boat, operating some distance from the Kimbler, drags up his anchor and with it part of the wrecked plane. A police launch is quickly on the spot to take the pieces away, for they might provide vital clues. More and more pieces of the Viscount are salvaged from the bed of Botany Bay. It's a grim task, but only by recovering all the wreckage can the Department of Civil Aviation be certain that they can reconstruct the cause of the crash. And on their findings, the continued magnificent record of Australian commercial aviation may depend. Soon the deck of Kimbler resembles a wartime catastrophe. Kimbler's captain, a DCA official, and police inspector Barnes examined part of the airliner's radio. The radio which gave no indication that anything was amiss. Its last message was, Tango Victor Charlie, thank you, 217. The wreckage recovered by divers and Kimbler, and the debris found ashore is taken to the security hangar at Mascot. Here the Viscount will be reassembled in mock-up, and experts will probe the cause of the crash. Fifteen people have lost their lives in this tragedy. Safety demands a full inquiry. Australian aviation has a proud record, and experts will seek the cause of this disaster to keep that record. Wreckage which may hold a secret to keep flying safer in the future.